thank you so much. Now we'll move on to the much awaited session for the day. Uh, it is the icon oration, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce our three chairpersons, uh, Dr. Govind Babu, Dr. K. Govind Babu, medical oncologist from Bangalore, Dr. M. Vamshi Krishna, medical oncologist from Hyderabad, and Dr. Stalin Chaudhary Bala, medical oncologist from Vishakhapatnam. May I request you to please join us on stage? I now request you to please introduce our orator. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? Uh, it's my great pleasure to chair this important session. And our orator is none other than Dr. Atul Sharma. I think everybody knows him. And uh, you have his uh, slide here. He was in Ames for a very, very long time. And he has left recently. It's a sad loss to Ames. But then, uh, you know, as you know, uh, most of the medical therapy in India, almost 70% happens in the private sector. So it's a good thing that 70% uh, of patients will have his uh, uh, treatment. Uh, I think I will not take too much time to read this slide because there are so many things. Uh, and I think the topic that he has chosen is very, very relevant. Cancer burden and preventive strategies, time to fasten street beds. Uh, Dr. Atul, please. So good evening, everyone. Thank you, organizing committee, scientific committee, WMC, Nikhil, and Stalin for giving me this opportunity for a very, very important job. So I consider myself very lucky to be chosen or asked to deliver oration for this Golden Jubilee ICON meeting. Many, many thanks and congratulations to Dr. Parvish Parik who has seen and guided last 50 meetings without failure, and probably I consider him nothing short than, nothing less than a one-man army. So I, I, when I was asked to do this thing, I was thinking, what should I be talking about? So I thought that I should be talking about something which I did not do. And honestly, I regret that I did not delve on into this topic or did not work for this thing. So basically, read it as the rising cancer burden and lack of preventive strategies. And now this is the time that we should be gearing ourselves and probably contribute so that we can take care of this problem. problem. So probably we, I'll talk about something about, and honestly, we don't discuss this topic very often in scientific or meeting or so I'll be talking briefly about nothing new, some cancer burden, what is the prevailing situation, what can we do, where are the high risk area, who are high risk candidates or individuals, and what is the importance of the prevention, screening, early diagnosis, what are the available or prevailing practices, recommendation, and of course, last but not the, not the least, this is a important aspect which require multi-pronged strategy involvement of everybody sitting in the audience and beyond that. So coming to this thing, so probably I'll say that probably still we probably should be thinking ourselves lucky, India should be thinking itself lucky that probably we do not have that many cancer diagnosed each year. And I'll come to that. The development come with the price tag and when I go to the US data, you'll see that really this is a price some society will be paying for the rising incident cancer incidence. We are a country of one, uh, 1 1.4 billion. And this is a global 2022 data in public domain, 1.4 million new cancer cases. And you, I'll draw your attention to the fact that probably out of this, probably each year, probably close to two thirds of the patients that is close to nine lakhs or 900,000 we are losing. And what are the cancer incidents? If you see in the term of the aid adjusted incident, this is close to 100 per 100,000 population. This is the national average in this thing. 
And you see, I would like to I just put a box over there. The, what are the three important or most common cancer, which probably can be easily tackled by the prevention, screening, or change in the habits or socioeconomic status? Breast cancer, lip and oral cavity cancer, and cervical cancer. For all these three cancers, we have enough evidence from the country, outside the country, that probably these can be prevented at an early stage. If you see, and I pro probably I'll compare this to the US data also, see the age adjusted mortality rate. Incidence rate is close to 100, mortality is close to 64, 63, 64, almost two thirds of the patient. And again, the most th three most important cause for the cancer related death are the three, the same three cancers which are very common, cancer, liporal cavity, and cervical uterus, or cervical cancer. So this says that probably, probably this is just nothing but the, just talk about the what are the common cancer. If we prevent or cut, cut down this thing, we can significantly reduce not only the incidence, but also the mortality related to this, these three or four cancer, lung included. So this slide shows that the top three account for about 33% of the new cancer cases. Breast, lip, oral cavity, cervical cancer. If you add the lung esophagus, it goes close to 45% or so. And this account for about 30% of the cancer related death. If you add this to liver, prostate, larynx, which is again probably can be easily diagnosed or probably prevented because of change in the personal habit or this thing, that can even go up. I can. So now probably you compare Indian data with that of the US data. Our population is 1.4 billion, almost three times that of the United States. And each year we diagnose 1.4 million new cancer cases. We lose about 900,000 cancer case, uh, uh, patient, uh, people to the cancer. See the US data, 335 million is their population, almost about 25-30% of what we have in, in India. Their cancer incidence, 2.3 million. So this is the important I wanted to highlight. The, with the development, India is going to, next couple of years going to be a developed nation. So we should be minding this thing and keeping this in mind. Possibly we will be having the number of cases, cancer also being rising. Number of deaths compared to India, 2.3 million new cases each year. Just 600,000 cancer related deaths in United States. 1.4 million and 900,000. So we exceed number of cancer related death in India compared to United States. The reason possibly early detection, early diagnosis, of course the facilities are more, they have the more manpower and so on, but of course main contributor is also early detection and diagnosis. I did not, if you really know about the, want to know about the cancer incidence in the China, China also has a population just similar to us, 1.4 billion. Each year, 4.8 million new cancer cases are diagnosed in China. Our cancer, aid adjusted cancer, uh, aid adjusted cancer incident rate is close to 100. United States, more than three times, 350, 400. China, it is double what we see in India. So if we again become development with the same developed nation, with the same analogy in this thing, number of cases probably will significantly go up in the country. And this is the time we start acting. This is again probably, I don't need to go into this thing. So this was an article in IJMR about two years ago, cancer incident, incidence estimates for 2022 and projection for 2025. NCRP, one can argue whether we just cover less than 10% of the population, United, United States, some Nordic, uh, can, uh, Nordic countries, probably they cover all 100% of the cases, but mind me, probably we are the third highest number of new cancer cases in the country, after China, which is 4.8 million, United States, which is 2.3 million, and we 1.4. Globocon predicted that the cancer cases in India would increase to 2.08 million in next four to five years, in next 15, 16 years or so. And one in nine, United States is one in three or one in four, 
In India, it is right now one in nine uh, likely to develop cancer during lifetime. So of course, screening becomes very, very important. Of course, we know the lung breast cancer are the leading site of cancer, male, female, respectively. So what are the solution for this? This is a data published data from one of my uh, uh, previous colleague at uh, Ames, Dr. Gandhi. He wrote 70%, probably, I still probably to be on safe side, 50 to 70% of the cancer which we see in India are modifiable or preventable. So large number of the problem or mortality or incident we can prevent by simple changing the lifestyle, early detection, diagnosis, implementing and screening. So cancer prevention, screening and early diagnosis are the most cost effective and efficacious measure to prevent and control the cancer burden in India. This is very, very important. We need to gear up. Establishing a well-functional health system which focus on cancer pre prevention, screening, and early detection requires attention to three specific pillars which must be strengthened. So we do have the cancer registry. They are close to 36 now. Medical and health education, we are going towards that. And community-based screening and preventive strategies. For a prevention, what, what, what this is very important, for prevention and screening, community-based intervention is likely to have the most immediate Im important effect. In the United States also, where the screening pro program are in place for last many decades, only 50 to 60 percent of the population will be going for the regular screening. So we are sitting in India where still we do not deny it is a much significant factor for us not to consider screening. Kuch ho jayega, pata nahi kya niklega. So emphasis should be on how society, society in general, clinical society, our society, other social societies, intervention can occur within clinical settings to beat, better incorporate community intervention across not only the tertiary, primary, and secondary level of care also. So we do not want a situation where anybody, everybody will be coming to the metros or tier one city for the treatment and this thing. We need to strengthen then the probably tier two, three, and this thing. That is what happens in the most developed nation. The National Program for Prevention and Control of the Cancer, Diabetes, Cardiovascular, and Stroke advocated and proposed preventive, promotive, curative, and rehabilitative care to cancer patients at all level of the health system. This was started in year 2010. What, up to what, any level, of what level this achieved its mission, we need to see that. Population-based cancer screening for adults above the 30 years has been established to screen for cervical, oral, and breast cancer every five years by the primary healthcare worker, ASHA, and ANMs. We should not, I would like to highlight, that we should not wait till all infrastructures are in place. If all these districts have not been covered, then let us start from somewhere. That is what I would like to uh, highlight. So there are various societal guidelines. You have the uh, this thing, United States uh, Preventive Study uh, uh, Task Force. You have the American Cancer Society, WHO, some ICMR also, and from the Next, national cancer grid also. What are this thing? So they are certain recommendation, I don't need to go. These services basically have a better the recommendation. A means that the, we have the significant level evidence that probably it prevents the cancer related mortality or uh, uh, incident. B benefit for patient moderate level of this thing. So there are different, certain differences in the various science, uh, this thing, uh, societies and guidelines. So I'll just take a few examples. I'll just take the American Cancer Society, United States Preventive Study Task Force, this thing, recommendation for the breast cancer. It used to be 50 years. Now they have brought it down to the 40 years. They do suggest 40 to 40 years. Choice of annual mammogram is given. But 45 to 54 years, they suggest annual mammogram. I don't know how many of us, I don't want to embarrass how many of us probably who are above 50 or probably have gone for any kind of the screening. I have gone twice. More than 55 years, every other till life expectancy is more than 10 years. 
with regard to the colorectal cancer for again where we have the level one evidence that it prevents the can colon cancer and also the mortality. Now suggestions is there some difference between the USPSTF 50 to 75 years versus 45 to 75 years. These guidelines are for the average risk individual. Colonoscopy, if there are various means for the diagnosis for undergoing the screening. Colonoscopy is done full length colonoscopy every 10 years. If this is the sigmoidoscopy, every five years. And there are various stool based tests at this thing. Cervical cancer. Now our government has also started this thing, promoting this thing. Vaccination also is primary prevention of cervical cancer is ongoing. There are many state government who have advocated and probably asking the girls in the age group of nine and above probably also in the 20s and this thing to go for this thing. So ACSC is 25 to 65 years, preferably or primarily by the PCR HPV or core test, which means the including the HPV and pap smear every five years. And uh, 40 to 40, uh, 45 to 54 years, this is the annual mammogram. Uh, sorry, it's a misprint and well this thing and thereafter till this thing. So lung cancer we do not uh, advocate. So nowadays probably I, I don't know what is others uh, this thing opinion or impression. But one area where the females are strictly and competing with the male counterparts is the smoking. At least in Delhi if you go outside of any office or palm shop and this thing Every time you find the equal number of the men and women smoking and this thing, probably we'll see the effect in a couple of years and this thing. So maybe that's the high time. Why this early diagnosis is so important? Early detection can, there is the US data that at early detection can prevent up to 90% of the colorectal cancer related death. 76% of the United States colorectal cancer that occur in the individuals who do not adhere to the screening. So this is the importance of this thing. Despite this, in the most developed nation on earth, right now 40-50% uh, population will not go for the regular screening. Why, again, this is probably I would like to stress and highlight why early diagnosis is important, earliest stage detection is important. This is a nice article published in about five, six years ago. Global surveillance of trends in cancer survival in various nations. You see 37 million cancer individual records were reviewed and this thing contributed. Out of, for the 18 cancer, out of 71 can, uh, countries, and 322 population-based cancer registry. There were the two Indian cancer registry, was probably number of patients were five, 6,000, Guwahati and one other place also. If you see, so on the top, you see the colorectal cancer or GI cancer in general, the five years survival in the United States. From the, just, just take on the, this thing, I probably, I'll just, okay. So just take the last five years where the data, 2010 to 14, esophageal cancer, 16% five year survival, and you see the Indian, this thing, 4.1. Colorectal cancer, five year survival in the Canada and US in excess of the 60%. Indian data, 38%. So that this suggests that whatever we do, our cases are coming late, probably they are not getting the desired treatment and that's why the desired results is we do not see. Similar to this situation, you see the breast, cervical, lung, ovarian cancer, and the prostate cancer, which again can be considered for the screening. There may be some debate on that. So five-year mortality rate between them and us is significantly different, so we need to stress and diagnose these cases early. I would like to highlight a few exemplary work done from the India regarding the skinning, and I'll take, I'm no, I, I know that many places have done this, South India, Chennai, and this thing, RCC, even them had done exemplary work. TMH in Mumbai has done very good work. And so this thing, I was fortunate to witness or when this, uh, this was being presented at the 2013 ESCO plenary, I was there and probably made us so proud, this thing. Effect of the visual inspection with the acidic cases skinning by primary health workers randomized control cluster study in the Mumbai, India. 
I won't go into the detail of the study for the want of timing in this thing. So this was started in 1998. This was a cluster RCT initiated in Mumbai to investigate their effectiveness to reduce cervical cancer mortality. There were 10 clusters, each about 75,000, so total of about 150,000 women. The skinning group, rec group received four rounds of the cancer education, and on top of that, the visual inspection by the healthcare worker. Control group received just the cancer education, there to once only. So what are the results? Probably you see that the screening also they failed to, did not find significant difference between the cancer incidence. 26 in the screening group and 27 per 100,000 in the control. That's not the all. Compliance to the treatment. The, those who were detected through a screen, probably they, the compliance to the invasive cancer treatment was 86% compared to the 72%. Once somebody coming with the symptoms late during the course of their cancer, then probably a denial plays a very, very important factor in deciding the treatment. Not only this, the screening group later on showed a statistically significant 30% reduction in the cervical cancer mortality. So they concluded that efficacy of an easily implementable, this can be done, and probably the, the NCG has also adapted this thing, that may prevent 22,000 cervical cancer death in India and 72,000 across elsewhere for nation. The second important study from the, this thing for with regard to the surveillance or early detection was from the RCC Trivandrum. So there were the two paper, three paper, and there was an editorial also in 2005. The editorial diet was titled as the oral cancer screening, five minutes to save a life. So this was led by uh, the RCC and Dr. Shankar Narayan uh, initially and later on. So we have the immediate data, long-term data also. Again, started in the 20, 1996. 13 clusters chosen for the study, seven to four rounds of oral visual inspection, no technical high-tech instrument were needed by trained healthcare worker at three years interval and six to control group three cluster this thing. Altogether, close to 200,000 population was screened and followed for a period of time. They detected 205 oral cancer in the, and 77 oral cancer death in the screening group, uh, in, uh, in intervention group, that is the screening, compared with the 158. So immediate mortality was not very different, hazard ratio crossing 1.1. However, there was a reduction, 34, one third reduction in oral cancer related mortality in high risk individuals with tobacco chewing or smoking or alcohol drinking habits following oral visual uh, screening. So this is a kind of the low-hanging uh, fruit, at least for the high-risk population. Oral visual screening can reduce mortality in high-risk individuals and has the potential of preventing at least 37,000 oral cancer deaths worldwide. And we know that the most of the oral cancer-related deaths occur in our country. They presented the 15-year follow-up data also. 24% reduction in oral cancer mortality in users of tobacco and or alcohol in the intervention arm after the screening. This suggested four rounds of the oral visual inspection, and those who added to this thing, there was about 40% reduction in the oral cancer-related mortality. So Government of India, 2010, notified and started this, this thing. The national uh, prevention, uh, sorry, national program for prevention and control control of cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular, and uh, non uh, strokes. So these are the updated last report I am showing you. So these are the this thing I don't know. I don't need to go into the details. So the idea was establishment of the NCD cells, non-communicable disease cells, at all level establishment of the NCD uh, clinics at district community health center, and there was a provision for the daycare center at the identified district to provide cancer care treatment. So they also help in monetary help were given to the states for this establishment of the tertiary care center and state cancer institute and this thing. So this is the last report I see so published, I think, in 2020. So February, they were probably reported this thing. 
as on whatever the data as on tw March 20, 2016, program was implemented in 36 states and union territory of government of India. A total of 298 districts, NCD cells and district NCD clinics have been established. During just one year data I'm showing you, and this is really very, very important. I need your attention. During 2015 and 16, they screened close to 13 million, 1.3 crore million. And they detected 1% of that, over 13,000 persons were detected to be having common cancer, including oral, cervical, and breast cancer. If you see the two previous screening program, which were continued over a 10, 15 years period, cancer detection rate was much lower than the 1%. But this mass screening program for the non-communicable disease, they could diagnose 1% of the population screened or provided help had the malignancy, and that two of the most common cancer usually we see in our country, oral, cervical, and breast cancer. Based on this thing, at least National Cancer Grid probably adopted and recommended some guidelines. I probably will see uh, this thing. These consensus guidelines and algorithms are consistent with existing evidence and appropriate in the context of the health system. I'll show you some of the highlights of this, these guidelines which have been propagated and suggested by the, I do agree with some recommendation, I may not be agreeing to some recommendation. So for the breast cancer, NCG India says that what is what probably I would highlight that at least essentially these can be done. Clinical breast examination by healthcare worker, trained uh, by this thing, the trained primary care staff nurses in the age group of 40 to 65 years. And they, they have the option of the optimal when in case the resources are there, you can go for the mammography, digit, uh, mammography in digital and MRI and so. What I like among this recommendation is that frequently, at least they say and probably plead at least one to three times in a lifetime. Why I do not like, uh, what I do not like here is that the, every case they wanted that it should be referred to the tertiary care center and I don't think that is going to be wise strategy when we pick up a cancer, you were sent to Delhi, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Chennai and this thing, that's not going to work. Similarly, they have the cervical cancer also. It's the visual inspection that can be easily implemented everywhere and this is the preferred at least in our country. If you have the resource for HPV or this thing pap smear, nothing like that. At least again, minimum is one to three times in a lifetime. Similarly for the oral cancer, at least the, we identify the high risk individuals. We have the many people of uh, this thing, population, younger, young students, probably school, college going kids and this thing, consuming tobacco and this thing, I'll call Erica nuts and so on. At least they can be screened by the, I think, healthcare worker, dentist, physician and so on. So what is our job? At least we should be identify some high risk or incident area in the country, start screening there. We also need to identify high-risk individuals. Who are the high-risk individuals? At least for the common cancer, breast, cervical, and colon, we know that at least the sibling may be the risk they identified. Anybody who in a family history of the cancer, anybody who is carrying the BRCA1, 2, or other uh, this thing, pathogenic genes for this thing, mut mutation, this thing. So these can be this thing. So again, this high-risk population, one example is northeastern state of India. They were the, the report 2021. Cancer scenario in northeast India and need for an appropriate research agenda. Why did it say that the in 20, by 2025, they have the population about 46 million altogether and 70%, close to 70% is in Assam. But the cancer incidence is not highest in the Assam. This is in the uh, this is Mizoram and this thing. So from the 50% of uh, 50,000, it's likely to be 57,000, a jump of about 14, 15% in five years. And what are the common cancer which can be easily picked up? Esophagus, hypopharynx, stomach, lung, liver, cervix. So I'll just put it this in a table, this thing saying, if you just see the, compare the incidence from India, we know that we have incidence close to 100. Delhi in the uh, Delhi had the highest age-adjusted incidence of 147 among the males, 
Bengaluru has 146 uh, highest incidence among the women. If you see the incidence in the Ijwal uh, Papampere in the Arunachal Pradesh and East uh, this thing, then the incidence are probably more than double. These, these, and see the population size of these districts. Ijwal has the 4.93, not very difficult to screen. At least the high risk screen. I'm sure there must be some screening program going on, but at least I'm not aware about that. So uh, Papampere, the population is just 0.1.76. Cancer incidence, 219 per 100,000. With the oral cancer screening by the RCC and the cervical cancer, we were not able to identify 100 cases also. This is small population, very easy to skin and this thing, pick up the early detect, okay, this thing. See the East Khasi, uh, Khasi district, uh, this thing, where the esophageal cancer, 75 among the male and 33 among the female. And population, 8.2 lakhs. But briefly coming to this is colorectal cancer, I probably I can in the interest of the time, I can skip this also. Who does not average this, what and high risk? So, so what are the methods for the colorectal cancer? You have the various methods, this thing, all have the specificity or in excess of 80%. And FDA recommends that any test which has the sensitivity beyond 65%, the specificity beyond 80% may be approved for the colorectal or mass screening or so. So you have the difference, you can have colonoscopy, FIT, then the wag based FOBT, DNA sigmoidoscopy, and something new has come probably, I saw even the post by doctor, I think, Amol this morning. So this is something very recently published just two days ago in this thing. I don't say that we should be going for this thing, but this test, in case it comes down to, I think the cost comes down, this was the garden sponsored study in the United States, more than 22,000 persons who were going for the colonoscopy were picked up. So every this for people in the age group of 45 to 84 years going for screening. So what they did along with the screening, they took the about 20 to 30 or 40 ml of the blood and sent it for the uh, cell-free DNA genomic alteration, aberrant methylation status and fragmentation and this thing. And binary results were reported in the binary way, the, either the positive or negative. And they wanted to have it just 68 available participants with colorectal cancer and 7,000 available participants who were negative for advanced news placed on the colonoscopy. So I don't need to go into this thing. Just like said, they detected 65 patients who had the colorectal invasive colorectal cancer. And about 83% also had uh, this thing, positive cell-free DNA, giving a sensitivity, sensitivity of about 83%. Sensitivity was 100% for the stage two, stage three, and stage four. For the stage one, it was 65%. And so coming to the specificity, 90% of the participants without any advanced colorectal neoplasma, either the colorectal cancer or advanced precancer lesion identify on colonoscopy had a negative this thing, so specificity is close to 90%. So this is very high, I don't say this is ideal, but maybe that once it comes to the country and this thing, maybe a few individuals would like to go for that, but the problem with this particular test is for the early stage of high grade uh, neoplasia and this thing, sensitivity specificity is low. So what do we do? We have these guidelines or pictorial diagrams over the tobacco pouch and cigarettes and this thing ever since 2009. We used to, every, every time you, if you go to a theater for a muse, uh, movie, uh, Akshay Kumar will be probably squeezing a lung or probably mukesh from the TMH ward or this thing you'll find. But we, is that adequate enough? Probably that is not this thing. These warning, warning doesn't carry much of this thing. So ladies and gentlemen, this is time to fasten our seat belt. Whether you want to ride in this valley, drive in this valley, perfectly fine. At least make some effort. Or you want to enter us to somewhere, this thing, say the group, most welcome to do that. So take home message. This is a multi-pronged strategy where we have the, all the stakeholders, uh, clinicians, we as oncologists probably, we have the utmost responsibility towards this cause. We need to identify, we already have the high risk area and this thing, this is again say low hanging fruit. Identify high risk individuals, we see examine patients whose relative had the cancer and this thing. At least we can encourage this thing. So it's very, very difficult. We did a small study in AIMS and 
at least 100 siblings, we were asked only 10 undergone the colonoscopy. This is the biggest denial factor. And we all are, I consider that we all are the ambassadors for prevention, early detection, screening, and we should use the utmost in our routine clinical practice. And maybe that henceforth, at least one session each in scientific meeting, probably may be attributed or kept reserved for either the screening, early diagnosis, prevention, so. And again, taking from the NCG, probably at least one to three times in a lifetime, may be there. And I say that you are never late. So even if we are 60, 50 or this thing, at least we can ask someone or probably go ourselves and this thing. With that, I would like with the folded dead, I will say to Dalu, thank you very much for patient hearing and giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. That was, a, as usual, as expected, a great lecture. And I really like the fact that you highlighted a point which many of us don't talk about, how to prevent cancers and how we can screen it. We talk of big drugs and new medicines and molecules all the time. It's important to focus on screening. Thank you so much, sir. I, I would like to call... Going Babu sir to Phil State, Atul Sharma sir. It has been a long day, but uh, we are not having a formal inauguration, but I would like to request our program director, Dr. Nikhil, to please come on stage and say a few words. Uh, Indeed, it has been a quite a long day for all of us. And uh, before I start, uh, let me thank each and every one of you for being here, uh, even for the evening. And we have got another couple of sessions before we call it a day. Uh, as Vamshi just now mentioned, there is no formal inauguration. I think we are more into the newer newer days. But we all know that uh, we in our Sanskrit, they say it's tamaso ma jyotir So basically, Whatever we are doing right now from our, uh, I would say, ignorance to the knowledge, and that is what the entire journey has been for this particular meeting. Uh, it has been uh, quite a fruitful day for all of us. Uh, Vamshi, Stalin uh, has really worked hard to keep the things in perspective under the able uh, guidance of all our seniors, Dr. Purvish sir, Dr. Govind Babu, Dr. Heman sir, and everyone, all the seniors over here. The concept of ICON was, I believe, was born uh, many decades, I would say a couple of decades ago, with the main purpose to really uh, give the youngsters the knowledge uh, what they are really looking for and to really uh, promote more of our clinical research what, uh, you know, as, a, as a new platform. And that has been the real success story for ICON for all these years. And that is quite evident when you see the even at uh, 6 o'clock six or 7 o'clock, the halls for the, especially the PG students are completely packed. And that itself is a testament that how important this meeting has been for students, not only from uh, uh, students from Telangana, but across India. So once again, I really uh, must thank all of you. Uh, take it as a formal. Yep, yeah, I've already taken name of Dr. Purvish already, but anyways, I think I'm, I'm sure uh, he has been the main pioneer, and I'm sure everybody, he doesn't need any introduction. Yep, sir, please, sir, please, please come. And uh, with this, I would say it's just an, uh, I would say informal inauguration, if not a formal one. And uh, uh, let's have a couple of uh, days of more academic uh, discussions in next few, next couple of days, and uh, do the best for next two days, sir. Thank you very much, guys. I think the success of the Golden Jubilee icon is thanks to the hard work that Stalin, Nikhil, and uh, Vamshi were doing every day. I could see uh, 
as she is talking to them every evening and catching up and uh, you know updating things so i think the attention to detail is exactly what has made it successful and atul so nice to hear the oration thank you very much